Hey guys, welcome to today's podcast. We have Cornell Mack up there in Pennsylvania, and uh, we're going to catch up with him. He's a friend of the show, been on the show quite a bit, but uh, welcome back to the program, Cornell. Thanks, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's always fun to come on to the Green Industry Podcast and talk to my boy, Paul Jamison. And you were just telling me off air that your team, as we record this, they're out there mowing and you've, you've built your business to a place, a delegation where you can go in the air conditioning for a half hour or so and bang out a podcast while your team's out there generating revenue. Yeah, normally at the beginning of the week now, my guy, Captain Jack, he's been the crew leader and he goes out with my son and they get the week started so that I can handle any billing issues or invoicing, things like that. Um, while they're out there getting the work done and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, I go out with the guys and, you know, it's a camaraderie thing, hanging out with them. And then on Friday, again, close out the week. Uh, it's usually our shortest day of the week and uh, they go finish those things out while I finish up stuff at, uh, you know, here at the shop. So it's been cool getting to step back and sort of see things from a third party perspective rather than the first person perspective and to see uh, the different advantages that there are to not being in the truck all the time. So that's been cool. Yeah, well, I want to dive right into your big event. Um, last year was the inaugural one on the Wednesday evening of the Equip Expo, and uh, you guys are running it back this year. You're, you learned from your mistakes. Uh, Naylor's been helping yeah. you. <laughs> so Naylor, tell me a little bit about behind the scenes. But uh, hey, when you try something for the first time, you don't know what you don't know. But uh, go ahead and give everyone, maybe who doesn't even know what we're talking about, what we're talking about, and then, and then what the upgrades are for this year. Yeah, so the 2024 Win in Life meetup, I did the first one. It, it was like a three people. We kind of just did it spur of the moment, me and my boy Cedric and this other guy. And we had it at like a, I think, Guy Fieri Smokehouse down at Equip Expo. And it just happened like two days beforehand. We made a little post, and to my surprise, 25 people came now. I had been at Naylor's YouTube rally before, and that was the, my first experience was like not that the community was big and that people wanted to help where my experience back where I was from at the beginning wasn't like that. So when I first felt that energy at the, it was the GIE rally at the time. And then we did our own thing. It was, uh, I couldn't believe someone came. So soon as that was over, I was like, yeah, I want to start you know, my own event. I like to help people win in life. That's what this whole thing is about. And so I called it the 2023 Win in Life Meetup. And it was on Wednesday night. And I was so shocked that, uh, you know, I did a little promotion for it. We had just started doing more than one, like a live show podcast, me and Cedric. And we started to just talk about it. Then you, you helped out with promoting it. And to my surprise, People were so welcoming, uh, you guys especially, to help and to get the word out about the event. And then when I got there on Wednesday night, I was it was crazy. There was like 80 people in line already. So I was totally shocked by that. And the event was awesome. So this year, uh, we had last year we had a highest game uh challenge, the strike challenge, and the rock, paper, scissors tournament. It was at a bowling alley. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a bowling event, and it's free thanks to the sponsors. Uh, but last year, um, I just wanted to make it something like competition-wise. You know, most of the meetups were people getting door prizes or raffle tickets or things like that. I wanted to, you know, kind of put people's uh, destiny in their own hands, so to speak. And I'm from a sports background. Me and you always talk about basketball. So I wanted to have some sort of competition that anybody could do. Everyone can roll a ball down the lane. So, <laughs> like I said, it, it was cool, man. So many people came, 180 people. Uh, that's how many tickets were sold. I wow. think like 170-something people were actually there. And uh, it was just an awesome, awesome experience. I got uh, so much good feedback from everything that I was like, I want to do it even bigger and better this year. So the 2024... 
uh, Winning Life Meetup at Equip Expo is going to be Wednesday night from 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, 6 to 9 p.m. will be the bowling portion uh, of the event. And then from 9 to 10 p.m., me and Cedric will be doing the Lawn Care Power Moves live show, uh, talking to the winners and some sponsors and things like that. But we decided to change some things up this year. Uh, we had the highest uh, game, but I-, I was shocked that that many people came, Paul. It was really hard for people to play an entire game. Mm-hmm. And so I had to revamp some things, and I think more people will be there this year. Um, I rented out an entire building. It's called Vernon Lanes now. So there's an upstairs area that has eight private bowling lanes where we'll have all of the bowling events. And then downstairs, there is a... Uh, There's a a whole area that has seating and everything. Uh, A cash bar will be available down there so people can just have conversations, have a good time if they don't want to bowl. But this year, we're going to have a best dress contest. We're going to have the strike challenge again, and we're also going to have uh, the rock, paper, scissors tournament. So I'm excited for it. It's going to be Wednesday night, and yeah. That's it. <laughs> now, last year, Mitchell Gordy, I know he had like an ankle injury or something with his foot. If I remember, he was in like a uh, – something was wrong with his foot. His dog, I think. I think his okay, dog. He that, tripped over his dog or yeah, something. I forget what happened. I just, <laughs> I just know that he's a 300 bowler. I mean, he's, 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 he's the kind of guy that's going to go out there and get a strike every time. Um, what, was he able to participate last year? Or have, you, have you seen his skills yet? No, unfortunately, he wasn't. He did come, and he sat there and hung out. That's one of my uh, jobber brothers. So mm-hmm. he came to support the event, but he could not participate. So hopefully this year my man Mitchell uh, can come because he has a uh, he has a good event, too, on Tuesday night that I went to. And so he, like, repaid the favor, came through, uh, you know, had a good time. But unfortunately, he did not get to throw any bowling balls down the lanes. Hannah was telling me the first time that she invited him to like a, it was like her niece's seven year old birthday party or whatever. It was at bowling alley and she invited Mitchell to, to come. And uh, she said, he shows up, he's got his bowling ball bag. He's got his own shoes. He's got his own little glove. He's got the whole, the whole thing. And it's like a bunch of little seven year olds out there at their bumpers and Mitchell's out there in the other lane, you know, throwing strikes. And she's like, who is this guy? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see it because it's funny. My, you know, Lamont Harrison, Pookie, Pookie, he, he started it off, uh, kind of like how you did with me with the basketball, but he started poking the bear talking. He was talking that trash before he got down there. And then, uh, and then Pookie, I think he had a surgery or something. He messed his shoulder up. So oh, man, those North like Carolina every, boys. Every, every, <laughs> yeah. It was a walking wounded down there. <laughs> Uh, with, 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 my, with my guys last year, but uh, it was still an amazing time. Hopefully Mitchell can come this year. I want to see him. Uh, I do want to see, because when you see someone who actually knows what they're doing, it's it's amazing how how great a bowler is. You see how athletic people really are, because it's, it's not easy to make sure, I mean, to, to bowl no 300, bro. That ain't easy. Yeah. Well, even mentally, if if you get six or seven strikes under your belt, like mentally, you got to be thinking, don't screw this up. Like just, you know, because I'm a golfer and um, there's a lot of mental stuff going on in golf, but I'm sure it's the same in bowling. You get to like eighth, ninth, tenth frame. You've got to keep getting the strikes. Mentally, you got to be locked in. No doubt. I only went golf. I went golfing one time. I've been to a driving range a bunch of times, but to actually golf, 18 holes. I've only went one time. I was at a bachelor party. And, uh, man, that game's hard, too. I can't ever hit the ball straight. I hit it straight one time. But they didn't measure the thing or anything, but it, I hit it really far as a par four. I hit it like, uh, I don't know, 15, 15 or 20 feet from the hole. Wow. People, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know how to swing the thing, really. I just swung it like a baseball bat. <laughs> I got uh, a YouTube channel I'm trying to get get up and running uh it's called paul jameson golf and so it's got like maybe eight thousand subs on there and I, I just go out play golf and film myself and 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 throw it up there so just like we have the lawn care world there's a whole nother world on youtube called youtube golf 
And uh, like the community and the lawn care, though, like I'm friends with you, Cornell and Mitchell and Pookie and Naylor. And like, I know, you know, like I'm in the in crowd, if you will, of the lawn care community of like, you know, being friends with everybody. But mm -hmm. in the golf community, like nobody knows who I am. I'm like a, you know, I'm an outsider and they're all like friends and making content and everything. And it's just so different, like being in that world and ain't nobody really give me the time of day or you know, respond to my messages or it's just frustrating, but, um, I am a content creator in that industry as well. It's just humble, humble beginnings. <laughs> and a lot of people not taking me serious, but. Yeah. And I think that I'm happy that you pointed that out because we have so many different interests and this is why my lawn care podcast is a little different because I don't necessarily always talk about lawn care and business. We have so many different interests out here. And content creation, I believe, is the future. That's why I like the LCR Summit and getting to learn from uh, people. Although we're in the lawn care industry, it's piqued my imagination to think of a whole lot of different other things. I tell Captain Jack, if you like fishing, because he likes fish tanks and things like that, make a YouTube channel about fishing. You're doing one about golf. People do them about the stock market, there's all types of different things. If you have an interest in something that you have a passion for, I believe you should start making content for it uh, because you just never know. You just never know. You might be the guy or the girl. What do you think about that, Paul? Yeah, I I think that uh, creating content and, and, and being, um, I'm trying to think how to explain it. So I was actually asking Jonathan about this, um, Cornell. I was asking him what he thought because I said, is this a distraction making golf content? Is it, is that a distraction from serving my, the green industry podcast listener and my uh, customers that I help in the, in the lawn care world um, with a coach in and, and everything I do to kind of serve this industry is the golf content, a distraction for that, or is it a market and an opportunity that I should go, you know, knock on that door. And he thought it was a big opportunity, a big, you know, a big market. So i um, going to dabble my, you know, extra time, if you will, in, into creating content for that channel, Paul Jamison Golf, and see, you know, see where things go. So I love playing golf. Like I love being out on the golf course. And if I can monetize that and create content around that, um, why not? You know what I mean? And there's something in business called the first mover advantage where, like in TikTok in 2019 and 20, if you were making content, you got a whole bunch of views because you were a first mover. There was uh, a big demand for TikToks, but not enough people making them. And that was the same in like Instagram reels in 2022. But right now what I'm noticing with the golf content is it's super, super popular. Um, the, the content that's being made gets so many views. Um, Bryson DeChambeau just put out a video with Donald Trump playing golf. And I had like 77,000 views in the first hour. And so it will probably have over a million views in a few days. So my point is, after they watch that video, YouTube has to recommend, you may also like and like more, more content. And there's just not enough golf content right now. So I see a, I see an opportunity there. Um, but I'm not, I'm not stopping creating the Green Industry Podcast episodes or anything like that. Um, I'm, I'm just going to try to do both. So what do you think? Yeah, and that's why I don't think it's a, I would have said the same thing. I don't think it's a waste of time because, again, as long as you stay true to the Green Industry Podcast, it's not like you're putting golf content on your podcast all the time. That's one interesting thing about Paul Jamison. And if that's a thing that you have passion for and you're going to do it anyway, why not make content once you already know the formula? I've been watching so many people and it's like you start business in one thing and then because you get good at it and you learn how it works, you realize that uh, those principles work in everything and that you could take those same uh, things that you're doing f to make this one thing successful. And most times it translates to this other thing that you're doing and now you know the process. So mm -hmm. it cuts down the time that you have to, like I've been putting everything I had into this lawn care thing for years and years and years now and i've been listening to you guys and thinking about this stuff and seeing how things work so i was like i'm already doing this stuff too let me make this and when i started to do it and it started to work a little bit now i'm thinking 
well, I'm learning things about real estate and my wife is doing that. Like, what if we made a real estate channel that shares the growth that we're, because this is what we're doing. So it's not a waste of time. If you already know the process on how to make content, it's just showing another aspect of you. And then I think that you make separate channels so that people understand what they're getting because they might've started to follow you because of the green industry podcast or me for Mac landscaping and lawn care on YouTube but then you just say, hey, I also do this. And then if they want to follow or then they can or some people might find you just because of golf and they might not ever know anything about the Green Industry Podcast. But you'll have that community, too. And then we realize that there's so many people around here that are like us then we don't feel like we're left out anywhere. And then you can, I think, win in life that way. So I don't think it's a waste of time. And I think that you should continue to, to make the golf stuff, bro. I really appreciate that, Cornell. And you're, um, you've been very encouraging this week. I, I know you called me a few days ago with a, a word of encouragement. And I was so perfect. Time. You couldn't have called me at a better time I, and, and given me that word of encouragement. That was awesome. And I appreciate you sharing that about the golf content because I was really concerned. Am I, am I being distracted and I, sh you know, shouldn't be doing this and just singularly focus on how I make the green industry podcast better and, and all the ways uh, around the business kind of of that epicenter or do I you know this is a hobby of mine that I enjoy doing just like you like playing basketball or someone else might like you know whatever you guys like to do hunt fish camp I don't know but um, I like being on the golf course and it's like if I can make content doing something that I enjoy I, I, I'd, I'd like to see where it goes uh, maybe it goes somewhere big maybe it doesn't but I, I don't want to look back and um, be like I didn't try um, Wayne Gretzky uh, I think he's a Pennsylvania boy, Pittsburgh Penguins. But he he said you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And so if I don't take the shot, five years from now, I'll look back and be like, man, what, what whatever happened with that golf thing if I would have tried, you know? Yeah, and that's the whole thing behind my On the Attack with Mac podcast is I've lived with those regrets. And then when I finally started my – what I call my small little business, because I'm not out here trying to compete with anybody else to do anything. I just want to win in my life. But when I, when I started that, it was like, it was crazy. I was like, oh my goodness, things have just, just opened up to this whole new way of thinking. And I realized like I have, have been doing things the wrong way the whole time. So now that I have this, this thing figured out, I'm like, all right, let me encourage the people who are who have helped me and like you. So I forgot where I was going with that, Paul. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. What was I just talking? <laughs> this is my well. You, you were mentioning how you encouraged me. Um, you're talking about your. I, I don't know where you're going with it. Yeah, I, that <laughs> happens to me every now and then, because I <laughs> I get so excited about what someone's saying i sometimes i have to write it down so that i don't lose where i was going with the thought and then it'll come pop back into my head later on with adhd uh but yeah we might as well just change the subject because it, it won't come back now I, I i know i was going to say something good there too that's unfortunate yeah you i i, I was suspecting you to say something good there but um i do want to uh talk a little bit about the lcr summit um Naylor did an event in january uh, back in Atlanta. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I live in Florida now. I moved to um, the Sunshine State. It's sunny out there right now. It's awesome. I, I pinch myself pretty much every day down here. It's it's incredible. But um, the first LCR Summit was in uh, Atlanta back in January, I believe it was. And the second one is going to be in Louisville on the Monday and the Tuesday before Equip. So I actually already booked my flight um, I can't remember if I'm flying from Sarasota or Tampa, but wherever I booked it from, I'm flying up to Atlanta, getting on a connecting flight, and then flying to Louisville on Sunday, October 13th. So I'm planning on getting, never done this before, but I'm planning on getting in Louisville on Sunday and then going to Naylor's event on Monday and Tuesday and then going to Equip on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, what, what are your plans for, for LCR Summit, uh, Equip Expo Week, and, and what do you have to say about Naylor's event? Uh, Naylor's event was dope. Again, that was a 
a big thing for me. We were talking about the creating content stuff. That's where I was going with that. When I started the On the Attack with Mac podcast to go solo, I was like, I want to do things how I want to do them. I don't necessarily want to talk about business all the time because that doesn't, that's not what's always on my mind. I wanted my podcast to be more like talking to the people uh, about how I'm actually feeling right now in the moment because people have been reaching out and telling me that it was helping them. So I was like, all right, let me keep doing this. This is what I want to talk about anyway. And it might not always be about business or growing or having a million dollars or anything like that, but it's about winning in life because that's why we do the thing. So I wanted to be a little bit different and LCR summit getting to come down there and just learn from you, uh, Mr. Producer, which was cool to actually see, what he looked like, which he didn't look like what his voice sounds like. I don't know what I had pictures in my head for what Marty, Mr. Producer actually looked like, but his voice, I don't know. I had like, I, I, don't, I can't, I don't even know. He just see, I thought he was like 11 feet tall. But, you know, <laughs> he, he just had this, this big voice. I was just imagining like a, a big Paul Bunyan type guy. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to come down there to see him, but I just wanted to learn how to do this content thing. A better and more professional the same way I want to learn how to do my lawn care business more professional and I figure if I'm doing lawn care I'm doing lawn care YouTube or green industry YouTube who better to learn from than the people who are doing it at the highest level like you uh, Naylor Mr. Producer lawn care millionaire Keith Kalfas Payjack all you guys and so I and then also it's like Sometimes you have to pay some money to get access. And I was like, I, I'm cool with flying down here. I'm cool with uh, paying this money so that I need to invest in myself. And if, no, nope, you can't always get things for free, right? People have paid their money to learn how to do this stuff so that they had the information to actually put into something to give to you. And I was like, time for me to stop being cynical and really start investing. And that really helped starting with going to Equip Expo at the beginning. I just seen the value in going and being around the people who were doing what I wanted to do. And when I look at what you guys were doing, I was like, I want to go to Atlanta. I've never been there, number one. And then number two, let me learn how to be a more professional podcaster. Let me learn how to monetize brand deals and, and do things on YouTube and to be better at learning how to do what people are looking for, learning what people are looking for and the way to do that. Because there's YouTube uh, videos that you can watch, but when you get to sit in a dinner with like 25, 30 people, seven or eight of these people are killing it or coaching people on how to kill it, doing things on YouTube and uh, online with podcasts and different things like that. I'm just like, I want to be there now. So I learned so much down there. I can't say enough good things about it. And then the Creators Clubhouse, uh, oh, that yeah. one down in Atlanta, man, you're getting to actually be around uh, with David Shans of um, the Social Proof Podcast and to see what that, because that, Paul, I don't know about you. I know you've seen a lot of things, you know, doing the things that you do. But, man, that Creators Clubhouse was something else. Yeah, it's it's amazing. David Shands is next level. He's he's emerging as one of the top podcasters, and and he's he's on a whole nother level. He was at an event I was at down here, and uh, they had rewards uh, awards, not rewards awards. That if you did, if you had a million dollar day, you got to come up on stage and everyone would clap for you. Meaning, you you sell a million dollars in sales in one day. And uh, anyway, Shans comes up on the stage, and I was like, dang, that was a good day. You know what I mean? He sold a million dollars uh, in a day. And then they had an award for if you sold $5 million in one day. And Shans came up again. And I was like, what in the world? I mean, you're talking about somebody who in one day, Cornell, he had, he had sold $5 million. And the podcast was such a big part of that because he's built so much trust with his audience that when he went to sell something... They're like, yeah, Shans, you're you're doing this. Let's do it. You know what I mean? And and and, uh, but five million dollars in one day, and um, 
Anyway, what I like about Shans, I was going somewhere with that, is he's so humble. Um, I, Naylor and I got to go. He was having dinner at Kava on, on Water Street in Tampa, and Naylor texted him. He's like, yeah, come have, come have dinner with us. And, and we went down there, and we were walking back, and I just got to talk to him. And, and I said, hey, David, I said, I'm thinking about moving to Florida, but I know Atlanta is like the hub of, I mean, you know, Shaq lives there and um, so many celebrities. I don't listen to Cardi B and I don't even know half these people, but um, they all live in Atlanta, right? And, and uh, they're just there and it's so easy for people to fly there. And I was telling him, I was like, I know as a content creator, Atlanta's, you know, makes sense, but I don't like Atlanta anymore. Thinking about moving to Florida. And he just started asking me all these questions and like he, he was um, being just such a genuine friend to me. And then his wife called, it was like 10 o'clock, his wife called and the kids were all like on his wife's lap and they're like, hey, the kids wanted to tell you good night. And he was like, uh, and I could see him all on FaceTime. He's like, hey, I'll call you guys back in five minutes. He's like, I'm helping my friend Paul. And then I was like, what in the world? Like, go talk to your kids, man, and, and, and whatnot. But he was, he was just uh, giving me the best of his, his um, advice and time. And anyway, he told me to move to Florida and I did, but um, Sh Shans was awesome. But you mentioned something about access. Like we wouldn't have had access to David Shans or that cl creator's clubhouse if it wasn't for Naylor and like, you know, going there and stuff like that. And so because I went to the LCR summit, I met David Shans in person like that. And then he remembered me. And then, you know, we got to have like this awesome epic conversation and, in Tampa that, um, ultimately his, his, um, I don't want to get too deep into the story and put you guys all to sleep and bore you. But, um, <laughs> he, he told me a phrase that I hadn't told anybody, but I kept like when I was praying about, should I go to a, stay in Atlanta or move to Florida? I would always have this phrase. I'd be like, well, you can always move back. You can always move back. Like you can always move back. And I'd always kind of just say that, like, while I was praying, I'd be like, well, I can always move back. If it don't work out, I could always move back. And um, when I asked him what he thought, he's like, well, you can always move back. He's like, if it doesn't work out, you can always move back. And he told it to me like, just like I had privately told it to God, he told it to me. And I was like, okay, I think I need to go to Florida. And if I don't like it, then I can always move back. You know what I mean? So um, I know I went down on a tangent there, but um, you want to put yourself in rooms with people like David Shands, who makes $5 million in one day. And Jonathan Potoshnik, who's got a net worth over a hundred million dollars. Um, I don't know what he sold service autopilot for, but you know, he's, 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 if he, he's got a lot of money, uh, tens of millions of dollars. You know, you go to check your bank account. He goes to check his bank account and it's like, probably says like 27 <laughs> million five, you know what I mean? Just like crazy amounts of money. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, you don't want to regret it. And that's actually what the, I was getting at earlier when I talked about, on the attack with Mac, uh, my podcast, it was the regrets of not getting things, not doing the things that you thought that you could do and then having to live with that later on. That's what I like to talk about. And you get to meet David Shans because you actually did something. And what happens if you, if you didn't do that? And then maybe you don't, or maybe you take a little longer to move to Florida. And maybe you leave your happiness and maybe something happens because you didn't do it. And now you got to live with that regret. And I just, I feel like we don't have enough time to do that anymore. I'm 41 years old and I've been living with those type of things for not trying or not acting on something through procrastination or through the stinking thinking or anxiety or thinking too far in the future. It's cool to have vision, but sometimes we paralyze ourselves thinking about what is way out there. We haven't even addressed the things that are right here. And so I, I just got tired of living with those type of regrets, Paul. So I'm, uh, it just makes me happy. Anytime that I hear someone who is doing something and they're, they got their foot on the gas pedal and they're moving and they're in motion and they're thinking about the thing that they want to do, but then they're acting on it because I think that regret is one of the worst things that a man can have, you know, especially a man. I don't want to for anyone, but especially uh, a man, because I, I don't want that to, I don't want anybody to live with that type of stuff. And uh, yeah, that's how I feel about that. I don't know where what I was would going. You, say, you, you mentioned that word procrastination. What, what would you say to somebody who's listening and there's something that they've been sensing that they should attempt or do or an endeavor that they should pursue and they, you know, 
they just haven't done it. That paralysis analysis has got them procrastinating. I think that we procrastinate because we are paralyzed by the fear of what could be. And that might be the good thing, maybe, uh, or, or the bad thing. Maybe it won't happen. But sometimes we think, what if it does happen? Like, what if you do do something and it becomes big? Will I be able to handle it? I think that we need to stop worrying about the fear so much and just say, you know, the heck with it and just go after it and just give it a shot. The worst thing that could happen is you can just move back, right, Paul? You could just mm -hmm. move back if it doesn't work. So don't live with the regret because I think that's the even worse fear. It's like you fear not starting because of what can or uh, may not happen. Maybe you will fail. Who knows? But at least you'll know. Like, I feel like it's better to just know. So my advice would be give it a shot. The worst thing that could happen is you just move back. That's what I would say. It's so good. I forget Jonathan's story of his. He had some businesses early on. He was telling me about like a cleaning business and some other things, and, and they didn't pan out the way Service Autopilot and City Turk, you know, panned out. But in the whole grand scheme of things, I think when we try some things, even if it doesn't quite work out the way we wanted to, there's there's stuff that we can learn in that. Um, uh, people don't know this, but before I ever had the podcast, I worked at a radio station for five and a half years and the manager, the general manager, not Mr. Producer, he was the assistant general manager, but basically his boss told me I wasn't good enough to be on the radio. And, and they had me on the overnight shift from midnight to 6 a.m. We had a couple of police officers who listened to me, but I was basically a glorified security agent because I was manning the studio. So it protected from theft because, you know, I was there. Um, but I, I told the boss, I said, Hey, I really don't like midnight to 6 AM. It's my health is pathetic right now. Like I'm, I'm, I, I would go to radio station for midnight to six. I go load up my trailer and go start cutting grass. And then like, I just, my body was destroying my body. And I was like, I, I really want to be, be here during the day or something like that. And he's like, you ain't good enough for radio. You can't, you're not good enough for prime time. And, and, um, um, uh, it really, really um, hurt my feelings, but he was right. I wasn't that good at, at, at broadcasting and I paused at all the wrong times and, and I'd listen back to myself and he would show me, he's like, you pause at the wrong time. You, you know, he just drilled me of how bad of a job I was doing. But because of that constructive criticism and it was called air checks, they'd make you listen to what you said on the radio and then he would critique it, but it actually made me better. It got me more tighter and, and better at broadcasting. And eventually he did give me a promotion and I got a, a radio show during the day, during prime time, which was awesome. But that whole radio thing, nobody who listens to Green Industry Podcast knows about any of that stuff. But that was five and a half years of trying something and it, it was really preparing me for the Green Industry Podcast. And who knows, maybe the Green Industry Podcast is preparing me for something else that I don't even know about. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how I feel. Um, you see, I people hear me talk now, and I, I have two podcasts. I do YouTube. Um, I never knew I'd be able to do any of this stuff. I didn't know I could talk. I almost didn't graduate over a speech class. I skipped a class for 30 straight days, and the principal changed my class, or I don't graduate from high school, uh, at least on time anyway. And now I'm on the Green Industry Podcast. I've been on every other lawn care podcast that I can think of, I have my own. I wanted to be a basketball player or, an, or a football player. I wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to be on a stage in front of people because that's how I was helped to just get through the life that I was growing up in. It was just watching Michael Jordan and the other NBA and NFL players and uh, trying to emulate them with my imagination, playing against regular kids like myself. And that was the only plan I ever had. I never wanted to have a job or do anything like that. I mean, I just wanted to kind of have a family because I didn't have one as a kid. And then to my surprise, I grew up. My grandmother taught me how to cut grass and everything, trim shrubs and do all of that. And I see a video and boom, 
I start a lawn care business and find out that there's this YouTube community and that people make videos and there's podcasts and there's Instagram and TikTok and all these different things where I was used to travel around in high school and right after high school playing on travel leagues and things like that, playing basketball. But that was really just for me. Me playing basketball may have inspired some people, but I never made it big enough to inspire a lot of people. And then I did a YouTube video that got 170 some thousand views. And I found out right then I was like, oh, wow. I kind of get to play basketball. I, I kind of get to play in front of people. Only I'm not dribbling a ball or throwing a football. I'm on a grass cutting go-kart cutting grass. And I can videotape myself doing this and talk about how it makes me feel. And then that would actually help people because me shooting three-pointers might have entertained a few hundred people at a time. But now we have the ability to touch thousands just by doing what you love to do and showing people it. So uh, I just, I don't know exactly where we were going with all of that, Paul, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll just end it at that because I forgot where I was going. Yeah, I'm just pulling up your YouTube channel right now. Um, Mac Landscaping and Lawn Care, 9.48 thousand subs. Going to hit that 10K subs, um, you know, here in the next week or so, pretty soon. Uh, your your recent video five days ago enclosed your utility trailer, 4.5 thousand views already, five days. Um, let me click over here. Yeah, yeah I got to get up. Go ahead. I was going to say, I got to get more consistent with it, but, um, yeah, yeah I want to talk to you about that in a, in a minute, but, um, I quit two full-time jobs to do lawn care, crazy story, 174,000 views on that video. Um, left $83,000 job to go full-time. What's that video? Oh, that's corn. Uh, that's, um, yeah, that's a shop tour with Cedric. Cedric. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, your, your YouTube channel is really on the brink of breaking through if you get consistent, but you've been consistent on Instagram lives. Um, can, can you carry that, that discipline over into YouTube? I think so. I'm going to move my live show and co-stream it to YouTube as well. Uh, so that will be coming out every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube as well as Instagram like it has been. Uh, but it's just a little different when I hit the live button, there's no editing at, at that point. Um, I, I don't cut anything out. Uh, I, I know not to swear. Um, so it's just live and I'm just talking to people. Whereas the, you and, it, and a lot of times it's just a free flowing type thing. This ADHD, it got me bad. I talk about it a lot, but that's because this is why I lose my train of thought so much. But people will make comments, and then whatever comes to my brain in that moment, I just say it. Whenever I make a YouTube video, it I don't want it to feel like I'm an actor because I'm not. But the stuff that's in my head when I'm only talking to the camera doesn't always feel like I'm talking to a person. So sometimes I feel like I'm just talking and it's not me. And I, so it takes a little longer for me to get to the mode where I can feel like I'm talking to a person because that's the best video mm. in my personal opinion is I'm talk cause I'm not, you're not talking to a group of people. So I, I don't, I always say, Hey, I'm not, I don't say, Hey, you guys or any, cause you're talking to one person most likely. People are watching us on their phone, not on the TV. The analytics tell me that. So um, being consistent with it is a little harder because I'm also editing everything. I make all my own thumbnails. I write all my own descriptions. Um, I've learned some things over the last few months on how to make that description writing and things like that a little more efficient. So I'm getting better at that, but the editing process and how I want the videos to look, if they don't feel good to me, I won't put it out. So to be consistent with it, Paul, uh, I think I might have to either come up with a, a small uh, team, maybe hire an editor or something, 
but eventually it will be as consistent. Right now, it's just been tough. I, I'm sorry for the long winded answer, but I think that is kind of why. Okay. Well, anyway, I was, I was complimenting your YouTube channel about to cross 10,000 subs and uh, that last video, 4.5 thousand views in five days is solid. My, my golf YouTube videos uh, barely crack 100. Um, so by, I get over 100, I'm texting Al Blaze. I'm like, look, man, I got uh, 14 followers. And it's humbling, Cornell. It, it's humbling um, because on Instagram, I have a lot of followers and I started golf from scratch basically and so I, I created a facebook page and I, right now i have 14 followers but i've been posting daily for months and it's humbling man i, I went from like one follower to two to three to four to five then it went back to four and i'm like man I'm, what did i do to make the guy unfollow me or gal and then you know now i'm all the way up to 14 not fourteen thousand, just 14 um you know but i got 14 followers on facebook and i'm publishing every day and it's just it's humbling to be back in the back in the grind, but at some point, you know, hopefully it'll break through. But but, but my view count is so low on the golf stuff; it, it's very demoralizing. Yeah, I will say I've been fortunate, and I I don't know why or how it happened, but uh, almost every video that I've put out has uh, done at least a thousand views, uh, like long form videos. And again, I'm not sure what i've done or why people click on them uh it's I, i'm really my if you look at the analytics it told it tells you like where people find your videos and people will browse and i'm on the home page of a lot of uh of people like that's what the analytics say and i'm not really sure why or how or what i've done so people have asked me like man you've you only made 70 or 80 videos or something so far and you're already almost at 10,000. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I wish that I could give you some, some advice, but I really don't know like what I'm actually what I'm doing. Uh, but except having fun, I think maybe that's it is just to show that you're having fun. I can't, I don't know, Paul. It's a, uh, it's, it's tough trying to learn how, and it's changing daily too, you know? To mm -hmm. figure out what people want, and especially when you, you, I'm sure you kind of know what people are looking for when it comes to uh, green industry type content. But then now you're into new uncharted waters, and you got to kind of do that whole research process again, I guess. What does uh, Mr. B say? You got to make 100 videos or something first before you know? Yeah, you, you got 78. Um, I'm headed down to see Mr. Beast at the Vid Summit. Um, September 3rd through 5th, uh, Irvin, Texas. It's called Vid Summit. So I'm going down there. He, he's the teacher. There, there's other teachers there as well, but to, to learn more about YouTube. Um, so I'm going to try to figure it out. With the Green History Podcast, we get like 100 views, maybe 200 views on these, these podcast episodes, sometimes 300 views, um, which is frustrating because I wish I wish we got more, but I you know I've been filming them on Streamyard and, and sending them to a video editor and paying the video editor, paying the thumbnail designer. I you know I, I spend money on these videos and then sometimes I get like seventy views or a hundred. I always get happy when they cross a hundred, but um, I, I have been filming and investing my money and put you know putting this content out there, um, basically at a loss I, on every video. It's in the red because I pay for the, the editing and the, the thumbnail. And, um, but I think that these conversations add value to people, Cornell. Like I don't have my business anymore where I could go and show off the, you know, Hey, look at my real mower. And like, I could get a bunch of views doing stuff, especially I used to do real mowing where we cut the grass with the mower that spins the other way, like on the putting green. And, uh, whenever I created content with that back in the day, it would get so many views. So, but I'm, I'm putting out quality content. It's just not, not getting the views I want. Yeah, I've uh, I've watched a few, like a few podcasts on YouTube, but mostly it's the shorts of, like clips of the podcast. Like there's this. Uh, I listen to some people are just funny. Like there's this guy named Jeff Teague. He was an NBA player, and he's a funny storyteller. So, but his I've only seen his, uh, I've never listened to their actual podcast. I've only seen shorts of it and the shorts be having like 
a hundred thousand views or something because wow. it's just it's just telling a story and i mean they're already you know an nba player already has a fan base most likely if you're an nba you were either really really good and had a a, a high Jeff school he wasn't no good he played for the hawks he, he was no good he played all over all over the place but uh, they had access he was, Atlanta, he was no good the access that they have like he could get any pretty much any nba player to come on the podcast and then boom it goes off and they have stories to tell i again like i said i don't know what um like why or what but the po- I, I don't really watch podcasts on youtube either but it can't hurt to put them out there, you know. Well, it does hurt my wallet. I, I pay uh, every video; I lose money. I, I pay a video editor, I pay a thumbnail designer to make the thumbnail, and then um, I upload it, and then it gets like a hundred views. Um, which I'm thankful for the hundred people that w- are watching us right now. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and for those of you who are listening, you could go to Green Industry Podcast YouTube and, and smash the subscribe button and watch these videos. But at some point, I got to ask myself, should I keep losing money on every video? Is it worth it? Or is it just a dead end? I, I, I don't know. Or maybe you just stop paying the editor and just put it out like this. Because if people are going to... It's all about the value, honestly. When you really look at... I've been looking at not long care YouTube people. Like you already know this, Paul. So we've heard podcasts with Mr. Beast or uh, Patrick Bet David or uh, Theo Vaughn. All of these people who are are doing big things on the internet and what they're doing. I stopped really looking at the lawn care people and what they're doing and just sort of implementing the things that I'm seeing from the people who are the most popular uh, in the world or the most popular on YouTube. And just sort of using some of that for my content in our niche, which is for me, lawn care. And I think that that has been like when it comes to like title writing and thumbnail creation, that type of stuff. I think that's what works. But then you listen to people like there's this guy named uh, he's a bodybuilder, Sam Sala or something like that. He's huge, but he's only like 24 and he don't edit or anything. He just films stuff with his phone. He has this thing on his the uh, lapel mic on his hat. And he just talks regular. And he puts it up. The video's grainy. It ain't high class or anything. And he gets millions of views. But that's just because he's just talking. And I think that people don't want as much production. Mm-hmm. If they feel like you're the person that's putting it out, then they're more willing because they feel like you're the one doing it. If there's a whole lot of production in it, then it doesn't feel as authentic anymore. So I I don't know. That's why I haven't, like I used to in my videos. And and if anyone's watching or listening, uh, I guess this is what I've been doing is uh, I stopped with the music. Like there's no music in my videos anymore. No background music. It's just me talking most of the time. I don't do any real cut scenes or any speed up or time lapse or I used to do all of that at the beginning. It was taking me forever and I just got tired of it. Um, I'm not going to mention who the person was, but someone Instagram called me and was like, I'm one of the biggest YouTubers out here and I don't do anything. I canceled all my subscriptions and I just filmed my video and I put it out every other day and keep it moving. And when I listened to that, I was just like, hmm, there's something to that because then I started to get through uh, my editing process faster. I didn't have to find songs and everything to put behind. And I was able to start getting more videos out. So although they're not as consistent now, I would say, Paul, maybe uh, just put it flat out like this mm-hmm. for these ones. Um, sorry for the long with the answer, but they're more real when it's just this and then people just they don't even care i feel like so that would be my advice for the podcast videos to stop doing a lot of loss yeah no i i appreciate it that's that's a brilliant idea and i think i could start with this one i got some already in the queue um to 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 get edited i'm just like that i'm embarrassed to even say how much i'm paying per video 
Oh, well then, it's... tell me, tell me off here, because I was embarrassed to tell you some stuff last year. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, I, I can definitely tell you the stuff that I've learned. You know, once we stop recording, uh, yeah. for the stuff that I'm doing, because it's it's very simple. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, is there anything else we're leaving out here that that needs addressed that you want to share? Um, with with uh, my audience, are you going to Naylor's event, LCR Summit? Oh yeah, Monday and Tuesday, I'll be there. I I changed my whole so Equip Expo is it was a life changing event for me in 2021. I um I didn't meet Cedric there, but that was my first experience with uh, people had heard me on Brian's podcast. I've said this before, and seven people wanted to meet or came up to me and wanted to meet me then <laughs> they want to take pictures they just hey we heard you on on brian's podcast and and that was really the beginning of me seeing what social i wasn't even really on social media prior to that but that was the beginning and so i made it a priority after my first experience to go down there and then i was just going on i think my first year we just went on thursday I don't think it was open on Wednesday or whatever. So we just went on, on Thursday. And then the following year, I was like, man, I, I can't miss the stuff that happened at the beginning. I want to be at everything. So we went down on Wednesday. And then uh, that was my second year. I was like, oh, man, I missed Mitchell Gordy's thing. That's on Tuesday. So I went down on Tuesday last year. Now Naylor's doing this thing on Monday. And I just said, you know what? It's just going to be a whole week for me now. I'm just I'm going to be down there on Monday come uh, learn some more stuff at the LCR summit and then just keep it moving throughout the week. So I'm excited for Equip Expo. I think everyone who's in our industry or and even if you're not, I don't know about you, Paul, but how many people have literally been like, man, I wish that my industry was like yours. I ain't even in the lawn care industry, but I come watch your live show just because of the energy. And I'm like, man, yeah, it, there, there's some really good people in this industry. Uh, John Pajak, uh, years ago, he, he took me back. I was staying at the La Quinta Inn, which I don't recommend staying there. It's kind of ghetto. I had to quit. My <laughs> first year, I stayed at Red Roof Inn. That was real ghetto. Um, but I used to, my financial situation used to be a lot different. So I was, I was, I was scraping money together just to stay at the Red Roof Inn. You know what I mean? But um, anyway, Pajak took me to the La Quinta Inn and, uh, it was freezing cold that night and I'm sitting in his truck and, and he basically just gave me this pep talk. Like, Paul, you have so much potential inside of you. And like, you're not, you're not living up to who you're supposed to be. And, and I hadn't even started this podcast yet, but John was in the truck, like yelling at me, like, you got to start that podcast, man. And there was no green Street podcast yet. You know what I mean? And he was just like, you got to go for this man. And, 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 and anyway, I did. And it changed my life, but there's people like this in the in this industry. They're just genuine, good people that want to see other people succeed. And like John didn't have to, you know, scold me at 1030 in a cold parking lot about how I'm not living up to my potential. But that's a true friend. You know, what I mean, that's a, a very, very good man of, of him seeing that there's more that I could be doing with my life. And, and um you know, I could share that same story about Naylor Taliaferro and then just go on and on and on and on down the list of all these amazing people. Uh, Keith Kalfas is somebody who will just call me out of the blue like you did and just be like, bro, I saw that TikTok you made, like keep going and, and stuff like that. And so I've been the recipient of so much encouraging uh, people and, and the friendships I've met. Um, you know, Brian Fullerton, somebody who, who pushes me to be better content creator and and stuff like that. And just, I could, I could name, you know, 50 people off the top of my head in this industry that have changed me to become a better person. So this community is absolutely incredible, Cornell. And uh, I'm thankful to be a part of it. Yeah, me too, man. And to get to, to get to talk to the people that have helped change your life through a video or through something they said on a podcast or a guest or a piece of equipment that they have shown was my original reason for wanting to go to Equip Expo. And then people became my friends. And I don't know how, uh, but you became my friend, Fullerton, Naylor, Keith, uh, all became my friends. And then 
like you said, you people just push you. And it's not even just the people that have the notoriety out there. I have friends like my guy, Marcus Tate. I call him the LBC OG, um, who's sending me encouragement. Like, just because people are making videos doesn't mean they're the perfect person or that they got everything together. People need encouragement, too. And this is why it's important to get around people and go to equip and learn knowledge so that you get also help other people because Paul Paul might not always have the biggest podcast, but Paul's helped so many people that like you've helped me, Paul. And this is why like I might not be able to offer much, but I can call you and say, keep doing what you're doing, you know, keep plugging along because we need you to keep making this content because maybe I've heard something and my life has changed, but there's someone new out there. And my message might not be the way that they need to hear it. It might need to come from Paul. And now we all work together to make sure that the people get the message just like, uh, you know, God. <laughs> so I, I just, I love our community. I love what we do. And I, and I love the people who were the pioneers of it like you. And I love the people who, uh, like Payjack, who push the people to do the things that they need to do. Because sometimes uh, we need a push. We just need a push. Yeah. And Mitchell Gordy, you know, I would see him on Instagram and then I was um, at Equip and I saw him for the first time in person. And it's like, hey, man, I'm Paul. I was, I'm Mitchell. And then you become friends. And then fast forward a few years later, I'm literally spending the night at his house. You know, we're hanging out in the hot tub. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he cooked uh, Hannah and myself and Naylor was there. He, you know, he cooked us this, this uh, incredible hibachi dinner and, um, it was awesome, but like I'm literally hanging out at his house. I've been to Naylor's house before. I've been to Fullerton's apartment. I've been to Blake Albertson's house. I've been to, um, I mean, I could go on and on and on down the list, but it's like you meet people on the internet, then you become friends in person, like you meet in person. And then as I travel around, you know, I'm, I'm hanging out in people's homes and stuff. It's just, it's an incredible community. And so I've, I've literally, Cornell, I've already booked my, my flight. Um, first class, baby. Got that first class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Jonathan Potoshnik, man. He he be he be like on the real first class, first class on these international flights, like where the the seat lays down or whatever. But um, I booked the first class ticket. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a long week in Louisville. At least I want to sit first class on that flight up there. But um, I booked my ticket to get in on Sunday. I'm gonna be opening up the LCR Summit um with Stan Genetic on Monday. We're going to be talking on content. Um, and then on Tuesday, it'll be Marvin Salcedo and the Lawn Care Millionaire and Pay Jack and uh, Eric Triplett, the Pondager, and some other guys will be speaking on business stuff on Tuesday. But Monday's the content day with um, the Dirt Monkey, Stan Genetic, and myself on Monday. Um, so anyway, I want to encourage you guys, come on out to Louisville, hang out with Cornell, hang out with myself Monday and Tuesday at the LCR Summit. And then Wednesday is your big meetup um, at the bowling alley, uh, Wednesday from 6 to 10. And then Thursday, um, we'll be at Equip All Day. We'll be podcasting from the big stage there Thursday morning and, and be hanging out at Equip All Day Thursday. And then Thursday night is Naylor's Rally at the Yum Center again, uh, Trace Atkins concert that night. And then Friday is usually a light day. Um, I think my flight's in the afternoon or evening on Friday. So that's my plan. Anything you want to add to to, to encourage people to get off their butt and get to Louisville. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing Pod Row, too, Paul. On the yeah. Attack with Mac podcast. Let's go. Be there. Green Industry uh, podcast will be there. LCR Media podcast. The Side Hustle podcast. And Profits with Payjack yes, podcast sir. will all be there. I think it's, what, Wednesday and Thursday? Yeah, it's in um, so, so, so it's in the West Wing. So so the, the main show is in the South Wing. And then there's a North Wing. Well, there's also a West Wing that most people don't know about. So they want they want to get people there to the West Wing because there's a whole there's a whole section of the show that literally people just didn't know because the other room is all like one big rectangle. And then you have to actually walk out of that wing and go through the hallway to get to the West Wing. People don't even know there's a West Wing, so they're like scratching their head, like you guys don't even know there's a whole other section to equip that you don't even go to. And so to promote that, they're, they're putting Pod Row on the West Wing in hopes that people will come to Pod Row and then be like, oh, wow, I didn't even know this was here. 
Um, so yeah, that's Wednesday and Thursday. Um, we're going to be podcasting from pod row, which is absolutely epic. Um, they have been sending me pictures. It's the equipped rolling out the red carpet for it. it it's going to be absolutely epic. Yeah, I'm excited, man. When Naylor asked me to be a part of it, I was, number one, I was surprised. And then number two, I was like, yes, I will definitely love to do that. Uh, on the Attack with Mac, something I started because, again, like, uh, I just want people to attack the wins in their life. Like, we want to win in life. It's just like sports, man. You got to go after. We talked with Jonathan Potoshnik. It's funny. Both of our podcasts with Jonathan Potoshnik were titled The Business Athlete because, that was something that resonated with both you and I, Paul. And mm -hmm. when we go down here, that's what I want to do. Come be a part of On the Attack with Mac at Paul Row. Tell the world how uh, you attack so that you can win in life and that we can help them win in life. That's what it's going to be all about. But I'm excited for that. The 2024 Win in Life Meetup will be Wednesday night from 6 to 10 p.m. It's free to attend. You can sign up on the Eventbrite link at... Mac underscore landscaping 412 in the road to equip Facebook page on my YouTube channel, Mac landscaping along here. And, uh, yeah, down in the show notes on any of the on the attack with Mac podcast is where you can find me, man. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, long care power moves every Wednesday night with Mac and still at 9 PM Eastern and the on the attack with Mac live show is on Monday nights at 9 PM Eastern. I think that's about everything, Paul. Yeah, if you guys are listening, uh, I'm going to take Cornell's advice and just throw this thing up there on YouTube, uh, raw and unedited on this one. So if you want to watch Cornell and I, I've been trying the, I use StreamYard and, and I got to remember when you're talking to switch the camera to you and I'm talking to switch the camera to me. So hopefully I've done somewhat of a decent job uh, with that, but you guys can go over and support the YouTube channel, Green Industry Podcast over there and watch this video Try to get it up over a hundred views, baby. Yeah. So I ain't, I ain't ready for that thousand. Max, like, hey, my videos always get over a thousand. I'm just trying to get over a hundred for now. But well, let's see. Baby uh, well, when they hear it on the actual podcast, we can make go watch it on YouTube too, man. Help my man Paul out. We ain't out here to play games with you. We out here to help you win in life. And if you ain't trying to win in life, what you watching for? Come on, man. Go out there, subscribe to the Green Industry Podcast YouTube channel, and get those views up, man. Come on, win in life. I can't cuss on here. Or I would say go out nope. there on that grass cutting go kart and go kick, but you know you can't do that on here. But you got to yeah, win in life. I anyway. appreciate it. Calphus, Calphus knows that too. And when I have him on the show, he's still dropping f bombs and all kinds of stuff. And I go, bro, bro, bro. I'm so sorry. I know you. Oh man, <laughs> at least you have the self control, so. Yeah, well, hey, I you had broadcasting uh, in your background. I had nothing. All I got is this crazy brain of mine. And so uh, I had to do some navigation and figure out where all the swear words were, put them in the suitcase, and press the button to turn them off whenever the show starts. But, you know, we're out there, too. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, I got it's Florida, man. I got to get out to the pool. And, uh, hey. Go to the beach, go golfing. I've been, <laughs> I've been podcasting all day. I interviewed Jonathan Potoshik for an hour and a half this morning and then uh, did some solo episode stuff. And then with Cornell, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm ready to go. Go enjoy Florida a little bit. Yeah, it sounds like the, the best life. Where people don't understand how tiring it really is, Paul. It is. This is tiring. To make a YouTube video, the break, it's like, it's almost physically tiring, too, to think as much as you have to think to be able to say the things that are on your mind, to get them to come from out your mind to to the world to help someone is not as easy as uh, Paul makes it look. So it get those views up, man. It wears me out uh, doing this, but they don't understand, Cornell. They think we're soft, man. We're soft. You're, you're in the air conditioning podcast and shut up. <laughs> hey, someone's got to do it. Might as well be us. Yes, sir. All right. One more hit in on the YouTube video here. So thank you guys on YouTube for watching. <laughs>